John, we're standing in front of uh, probably the largest and, and sort of more, most distinct piece in this exhibition that uh, is coming up. And um, it obviously is your version of da Vinci's The Universal Man or The Vitruvian Man. But it's got a lot of over uh, sort of a drawing on top of it and the way you approached it. Um, there's, there's just a lot of depth of information and, and, and uh, content in here. So why don't you start with the genesis of this and let's get into how it re is, relates very importantly to all of the other pieces in this exhibition. Okay, so the uh, imagery uh, arises like it does with all the other pieces from this meditative improvisational daily drawing practice. So I sit down uh, with a blank piece of paper, uh, clear my mind and allow whatever uh, wants to come up to come up, you know, usually using a pencil first mm -hmm. and then some kind of gouache and the imagery develops and then over time as I look drawing after drawing day after day I find some imagery remains persistent. So these uh, rectangular forms and interlocked rectangular forms are go way back 10 uh, years or more in the work. Yes. So that's not uncommon. I call them phylogons. Those little phylogons are drawn all around. And you're referring, like, for example, here, the green, uh, which you've well, done here in pastel and... Yeah, well, also just, just this... also the broader yeah, shapes. Just this broader yes. shape. So I'm drawing these broader shapes. Mm -hmm. And what happened in 2010 in the show, the inner hole show, was that um, the action started to happen in the negative space of it. So I've been very sensitive to and paying a lot of attention to what happens in between the shapes. Mm -hmm. uh, and so uh, I know late in the development of the show, uh, this uh, sort of figure started to emerge amongst the phylogons, and I p pursued that. And Beyond uh, just the sort of silhouette of the, we were talking about, you're saying you saw in a lot of these sort of what to you evoked a, f a human figure. Yeah, it okay. became a little more figurative. More anthropom very anthropomorphic, okay. And uh, so, uh, you know, I had always been interested in Da Vinci's work. I had read this recent biography that Walter mm -hmm. Isaacson made, so maybe it was percolating back in the subconscious <laughs> mind. Uh, and also uh, in the meditative teachings about the emptiness of the self or, em or no self, which is right. one of the teachings, uh, all seemed to make sense. So I thought this is one to enlarge, to make bigger. So, uh, so I started to design the dimensionality of each of the pieces and how they break up and how the edges would make the outlines in the negative shape. And uh, I got it built and then I realized sometimes what happens is if I take a drawing and then I take it through the process of illustrator outlines and then 3D modeling and then the machine carving and the painting, it becomes kind of mechanical. So what I like right. to do sometimes is come back with that hand again, that sort of, uh, improvisational drawing that I do every day and just go back on the surface with that and let what comes out. So this became kind of a summary drawing of lots of marks and lots of things. The uh, Even the phylogons themselves, these you yeah. know, structures, these interlocking structures that are the, you know, the architecture of it, if you yeah. will. Um, even those are painterly. Yeah. They're not, you know, you, you, you made it as though it had been drawn. Yeah, and so exactly. it, it's all has this looseness and, and uh, the, the artist's hand, the feel to it, as well as, as you said, this, uh, the overlay of, of, the, of the drawings. Yeah, I just kind of let myself go on the surface and a lot of the themes that are in my drawings for a long time, the rivers, the unfolding object, the swirls, the fleur de -lis, the geological stuff, uh, yes. you know, kind of came out and it came together slowly. I guess the rivers were in first and then I, it's, just, it's just how a drawing develops. I don't really plan it that way. I just let it come out. I have the colors, I have the pastels. But this sort of um, negative space evoking this uh, either a, a, a portrait or a, a figure. Right. Um, that's um, kind of a, a distinct aspect of this piece. Because also you don't typically work figuratively, yes. so this is you know, sort of a, a very you know right in your face sort of very figurative, but at the same time in a very abstracted sort of way. But the other thing too that's uh, dis so that makes it a distinct piece within the exhibition. Right. But what ties this to many of the other pieces and the recurring theme with a lot of the other work is the fact that that as you mentioned the inner hole series, those were also these interlocking structures that created an. Uh, a negative space in the middle that was a circle yeah. or sort of ovalish. Yeah. 
Now, this series are sort of broken open. There's fissures. And some of them even become sort of stretched out and a little bit more linear. So this too, though, has overall a generally sort of quasi-circular form to it, right. and very broadly, but also now very distinct breaks and fissures. And you had mentioned earlier sort of the significance of that. Again, now kind of reading back to, at a higher level, sort of your whole basic practice around meditation. Right. So if you'd like to kind of comment on that, because I think it also ties back to the imagery overall. Yeah, well, the circular form, right, in the Vitruvian Man is a cir circle and a square together. And so this is sort of a broken down uh, version of that. I think it's more, uh, that's an idealized person. And I think right. this is more about like what life is really like, <laughs> because we're not all ideal figures. And, right. And, and uh, in the negative spaces is kind of is still kind of idealized because it's the it's this I don't know what it's only implied. There's actually not a figure there, even though when you read it, your eye sees the figure in the, right. in the negative space. Um, and what really exists are all the things that surround the figure, like what what defines us as people, or all the like the car we drive, the house or apartment we live in, you know, the things we buy and what we wear, so all those markings that surround us. And it's also the markings of we're animals that we evolve from, you know, children to adults or from whatever, apes to men. <laughs> well, and that's the other thing too is, is we noted earlier when we were just talking, uh, when I first came in, it, it starts, it, there's just an evolutionary flow of this. And so the, this lower portion uh, has this kinship to the rest of your other works and to the inner whole works generally, which are more about the earth, the land, and uh, sort of that interaction and relationship between them. And here you start with sort of the, uh, an architect's depiction of like uh, gravel, which is the, the earth, and then these flowing uh, water, you've got now then the land, vegetation, and then things become much more evolved. And this is more distinct imagery where you've now got uh, sort of the mapping whether like it's like weather mapping or aerial mapping right. uh, of looking at land and agriculture. You've got very distinct depictions of agriculture with the fleur-de-lis, you know, and now architectural renderings at the top. And that's distinct in this piece vis-a-vis -vis all of the others. Would you agree? Yeah, I think this is sort of a culmination piece for the show in that way. Yeah, a lot of my ideas are summarized and... Uh, Perhaps prefiguring the next show. <laughs> I don't know. The, the, the culmination of the inner whole show was this no, no self portraits. When the figure right. emerged, that was yeah. like the peak of the show it was a because breakthrough. it was like a realization of the emptiness of self going on. Right. And for this one, I was working with Lee Brasington, who's a meditation teacher. I was mm -hmm. on a retreat in January, and we were talking about uh, something similar, but on the level of consciousness, like the emptiness of consciousness. And so right. that seemed to be the way the culmination of all this work. So this the inner whole cycles were all about the no self experience and then they kind of break open which is what's happening with a lot of these right. so there's this moment where in the in the uh, dependent origination the cycle of dependent origination when you leave the sensory input from the skin and the eyes and the ears whatever when your brain is receiving sensory signals before it gets to i like that i don't like that you know you you have a reaction to all these sensory experiences, or it's just neutral, like normally, oh, I'm fine, but now I'm too hot, or I'm not hot enough, or whatever, you start right. to have these reactions, and then that's where that higher mind starts to come in, so in that, in that uh, cycle of dependent origination, there's a moment when you can arrest that from the sensory input to the, to the putting your stories on it, or your thoughts on it, or right. whatever, and that's, that's a moment where you can gain freedom. And so that's what I think this get little gap in the cycle comes in is because, uh, because when you meditate more and more, you start thinking about that moment when it, it becomes, you know, sort of intentional or it becomes uh, uh, egoistic or personal in what you're thinking. I mean, you see something and there's a story about it. I, you know, I like, mm -hmm. most basically I like and don't like, but there's yeah, you know, mul multiple stories come in, yes. who you are, who you tell yourself, I'm a teacher, I'm a student, I'm, I live in this place, I have this much money, all these stories. But before any of that, you can arrest that. So there's right. this, this sort of this gap comes in. So, that, so I think it went from the cycle drawings to these, I just call them broken cycles or open cycles right. sometimes. Yeah, and the culmination of that then is like what's, when you, when you break that open, then you're left with uh, this kind of, mm, I'd say, awareness. 
something is aware of that when you're way back in meditation, like you're watching it all unfold, you're watching, so you're not attached to those things like what you own and who you are. You see that there's some kind of story. Right. So what is that awareness? And then that's what we were discussing on that retreat. Like, what is that awareness? And then the revelation of that was that that awareness is also empty. <laughs> and so it seemed like this was a, a, a way to show right. that culmination. And the funny part, yes. the part I really like is that the figure, even though it's sort of apparent there in the way your mind telling the story constructs it that it's a figure, but actually, you know, there's nothing there. Right. The stuff is here. But Correct. what is there is this, is, it's all part of the wall. So. <laughs> There's this continuum that you're part of, that this awareness is part of, that may be larger even. You see, so what, what makes up the figure makes up the whole wall of the building. So it's all like the background. So awareness. it sort of begs another question then. So your um, drawings, that you described your daily drawings, uh, you think of them as, as fairly automatic. Yeah. Um, so they sort of come out of subconscious and, um, and then they just sort of organically flow once you make that first mark. But what I'm curious here now, for when you do the overlay of drawing on right. something like this, right. was it intentional for it to seem more primordial and more <laughs> sort of just earth undeveloped yeah, certainly, here? Certainly not in and the And then beginning. as you got <laughs> up to the head, which yeah. agriculture, mapping, architecture, all requires now integrating, first of all, an um, innovative thought idea and in integrating engineering and, and science and technology. Yeah, I know. And so was it by design <laughs> no, it, or was it a fluke that no, all that, of those things are up at the top I don't the think head? it was a fluke or by design. No, I, I agree. Oh, okay. Uh, uh, this is, but you have the story. Your mind, your mind wants to tell a story. Right. So in some ways I could Even say... Even though you're subconsciously doing it, you're yeah. already sort of pre-programmed. And also no matter what I drew, you, right. would, make, you would make a story. There Correct. Would be that might be that, not I be that would make story. A story. Yeah, <laughs> every, everyone who looks at it would make a story. I would make a story. No, but that's the one thing that struck me because uh, this is the first time today I've seen it with the over drawing yeah. to see it in person yeah. and that's the first thing that struck me was well, the layering. I'll tell you what I trusted first of all I trusted my process which is just to open up right and and let your hand start met marking and go so I started this is like the first what for, happened first really yeah, okay I'm there and I'm here I mean it's, it's a lot when you work I don't know how long we worked on this to get it well I was here in March and you hadn't made a mark and here we are yeah. in August but even <laughs> before the mark just to get this uh, uh, designed a modeled, carved, sanded, uh, mounted, this right. on the wall is beautiful. A long time takes a long time yeah. to paint all the gold. Took a long time. Uh, so then, once you've done all that, to go and to start to draw on it is a big step. That's why when you came in March, it hadn't been drawn on. It, took a, it, takes, a, it takes a lot to think like, okay, I'm really going to trust it. I'm really going to just let myself go and draw on right. it, this thing that I've spent all this time doing. What if, it, what if it doesn't look good? How can I change it? I don't want to pants. Kind of got to overcome all that. So then I start and I like get it together. I get my head clear and I start doing it. And I just trust and I start working in that way. And then, uh, yeah, this had, that's the story it had to tell. But the, the history of the mark making that I do and the, my geology background and all right. that, it's kind of, I don't know, unconsciously builds it. I don't know. I'm, I'm, the middle section was done more or less first. And then maybe I saw, I don't know, I wanted around the head to be a little lighter, I thought. I wanted this to be a little darker. That's just how I felt about it. But again, I don't, I don't go into it too much thinking this is what I'm going to say. But I don't another go, rich layering of both visual imagery and content. Yeah. So I trust the content's going to come out because we are always telling stories. I learned that in when I teach the Drawing Your Own Path, that the, one of the levels of the teaching is the storytelling. You take a drawing and you just tell a story about it. And you can tell a story about anything, it turns out, <laughs> any marks. And, the, and it always says, like, if, gi given that you could tell any story, what, what is the story you've chosen to tell? So you've, you've seen it this way. So that tells me as much about the way you read it as what's there. But I'm going to read it totally different than 10 other people yeah, who walk in saying. here. Exactly. Yeah, because I, you know, I picked up immediately on sort of the, the map things and other people may not you know I, I can trust it if but, i work that way that the yeah. meaning is going to be open enough that people will bring to it you know their story and i'm not trying to impose that meaning i think it makes it open to more people but i also just just really trust what's going to take place is going to be what needs to take place but you know i think you said something very important though earlier um this piece is unique in many levels but it really is a culmination of this whole show yeah um and i hadn't thought about that it struck me when i first walked in in march 
because of the color, the imagery, scale, and what have you, right. it struck me as so different. But the more I've been looking at these other pieces as they develop, and, and now that I was talking about this, I realized this really is sort of the culmination of not only just this show, but really kind of the last 10 or so yeah. years, because in the last 10 years, you really had sort of a revelation around this whole approach of the, the, the wall sculptures and how they have this uh, particular imagery and content. And now that they're sort of architecturally sort of evolving, they're becoming yeah. open and yeah. not so circular. But um, well, as, hopefully that just continues, right? Yeah. You take up. But we started making them in uh, I made a year ago. We started making them in August last year. Yes, it was when I, I, I was even yeah. designing them. Some of them before then. And well, then, we looked at the drawings, and that's yeah. we actually picked out like ten or twelve drawings right. that you asked me what sort of struck me. I put out. I think I put out yeah, yeah thirty or forty drawings. Yeah. We picked out the drawings. I started to model from the drawings. Yeah, that yeah. was August. So it starts off slowly, and you you make a couple and kind of get the feel how it's going, and then and then by the time you've made eight or ten. Yeah, the bigger. Well, you just sort of answered the question that people always ask: well, How long does it take John to do something like this? <laughs> I mean, you you just described a year, but yeah. the, the reality is these there's more going on in your head in these drawings. This is the genesis of the work. Yeah. You just made a conscious decision a year, fourteen months ago, to put together a body of work. Yeah, yeah. But it's really it's a much longer process it, because of your process. It's like it's like the mycelium is down there. Yeah growing and interconnecting and then every once in a while up comes the fruit. <laughs> no, this is a fantastic piece. Thank you and we'll definitely talk about the other ones. Okay, cool.